The operation in Kursk Oblast has become a pleasant vacation for Ukrainian fighters who were transferred there from the hell of Donbass. They told journalists from the British publication The Times about this. Compared to there, it's like a holiday. When we arrived, I had a smile like the one in the toothpaste ad. We felt euphoria, relief, laughs Sergei. 30, whose unit was ordered out of the trenches of a ruined city in the Donbass region to join Ukraine's daring push across the Russian border to Kursk. Recalling the battles for Turetsk, the fighter says that there is a fight there for a pile of ruins since not a single building remains. Sometimes we lost too many people fighting at a distance of a few meters. I don't know what will happen to Pokrovsk, but it will be destroyed in the process. They are fighting for ruins. Sergei said, recalling the doomed battles for cities such as Bakhmut and Soverodonetsk. The command sent reserves to the positions in Toretsk from where Sergei's unit was withdrawn. The fighter believes that his stay in the Kursk region will not end any time soon. We will be here for some time. The expansion of the front line will mean that Russia will have to redeploy more forces here. We hope to give them some more surprises soon, he said. According to Russian war correspondents, Ukraine's 95th Air Assault Brigade encircled units of Russia's 18th Motorized Rifle Division in Malaya, Loknia, Kursk region. Journalists indicate that Ukraine's 95th Air Assault Brigade cornered Russia's 18th Motorized Rifle Division in Malaya, Loknia, using a flanking maneuver to cut off the main road. Notably, Ukrainian fighters have been pressing forward. Our aviation, artillery and drones are in action, but so far they haven't forced the enemy back. Russian war correspondents are cited as saying. Additionally, Russian telegram channel Severny reported that the 810th Marine Brigade was smashed near Korchuk with heavy casualties on the Russian side. Russian war correspondent Kotenok also confirmed the precarious situation for Russian forces in Malaya Loknia. Ukrainian military observer Denis Popovich noted that there will be an operational encirclement. They are setting up a pontoon crossing, for example, and are starting to cross it in order to retreat. This pontoon crossing will be under fire. That is, operational encirclement means complicated logistics, difficulties in retreating, transferring reinforcements. It will be very difficult for the Russians to evacuate the wounded. It will be very difficult to provide support because the routes along which all this can be carried out are under fire control. He explained, it is noteworthy that the territory that could be operationally encircled is approximately 700 square kilometers. The Ukrainian military operation in Russia's Kursk region and the forced evacuation of thousands of Russians could seriously test Putin's authority. Pro-Kremlin military bloggers have criticized the Russian Defense Ministry and at least one oligarch, Oleg Deripaska, has already publicly condemned the war. American researcher of Soviet and Russian history, Amy Knight, wrote in a column for the Wall Street Journal. The author recalled how Deripaska criticized the Kremlin's defense spending, called the war in Ukraine insane and called for an immediate unconditional ceasefire. According to Knight, these comments caused a stir on Russian social media. He probably wouldn't have spoken so frankly if other representatives of the business and political elite hadn't agreed with him. As political scientist Abbas Galiamov noted, Deripaska is a very analytical person, so before saying such things, he always absorbs the mood of other elites. This is not only Deripaska's voice. The author reported, she suggested that Putin's assistant, Nikolai Patrushev, could also be among this elite. Ordinary Russians fed a constant stream of propaganda about protection from the evil West are unlikely to protest. But Putin's elite support, which is essential to his continued rule, is less clear. He should not assume that they will forever support a war with no end in sight, Knight concluded. Putin has given his troops just over a month to push Ukrainian armed forces out of the captured territories of the Kursk region. As RBC Ukraine reports, citing a source in the military political leadership, the occupation forces received instructions from Putin to liberate the Kursk region by October the 1st. 
It is noted that their task is to do this without removing forces from key areas where Russia is conducting an offensive in Donbass, primarily in the Pokrovsk and Turetsk directions. In fact, the Russians are now trying to send a mix of units to the Kursk region from all directions on the front, except for Pokrovsky and Turetsky. But armed forces of Ukraine expanded their control in the Kursk region and continued to advance. After weeks of operations in the Kursk region, Russia has managed to slow down somewhat but not halt Ukraine's advance. Despite measured statements from official spokespeople and officials, the immediate objectives of Ukrainian units in the Kursk region have become clearer over the past week. The main intrigue remains whether the next phase of this operation will take place and what its strategic goal will be as the further moves of both sides will determine the development of events along the entire front.